Well, here we are for another uh, another edition of another uh, workshop, uh, another BMI uh, Nambu Health Initiative workshop, a, a uh, health initiative that was started several years ago that came through the Black Male Initiative Program that is a part of the Nambu Cultural Center. And, um, you know, what we wanted to do, we being the Black Male Initiative and the Nambu Cultural Center wanted to do is, is, is find a way to have, to engage the community with a series of dialogues around how to develop healthier, healthier lifestyles around health and wellness, and not just physical wellness, but even we've had dialogues on, on mental, you know, mental wellness and, 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 and things of that nature. Um, you know, uh, when we've been in person, you know, before COVID, uh, you know, we've had our, our sessions consist of roughly three to four in-person workouts, high intensity workouts that we, we've done in and around uh, the College Park campus around the University of, you know, U University of Maryland where participants would uh, generally engage in, in HIT workouts, otherwise known as high intensity workouts, um, strength training workouts, <laughs> body weight work workouts and things of that nature. And then afterwards having, you know, uh, dialogues about what, you know, what are, are, are good things to put into your body and, and why, and more importantly, why those things are, are important to put in your body in terms of, um, you know, uh, green leafy vegetables and, and, and non-processed foods, non-refined sugars, non-refined salts, things of that nature. What's the difference between a healthy fat and unhealthy fat, polysaturated fats and monosaturated fats? What's the difference in, in you know, things like avocados are, are chock full of those healthy fats that we talk about, the monosaturated fats. And, and, uh, and so in that vein, you know, we've been doing these workshops virtually uh, throughout this COVID pandemic. Uh, we haven't been able to meet in person, but uh, because of, of great student assistants like Alexis Robinson, who did a series of, of video workouts, pre-recorded video workouts that were uploaded to the Nimbrus, uh, uh YouTube channel um, participants were able to uh, tap into those and do those do workouts from home um, in lieu of meeting in person, which is what we did pre-COVID. And so today, um, our guest today is Troy Moulton. Troy Moulton, who is an entrepreneur. He, he's an alumnus of the University of Maryland. He's also a longtime member of the Black Male Initiative Program, going back to his days as undergrad uh, well over 10 years ago, you know, um, I believe Troy, you know, graduated, you know, in 2009 and was, a, you know, a BMI member before then and, and has been a strong BMI member all the way throughout it. But Troy also has taken a lot of time and effort to, to read, read and research as much as he possibly could about, about, you know, um, you know, how to develop a healthier lifestyle, you know, um, you know, you know, how, you know, in terms of exercise and wellness and, and, and getting enough sleep at night, you know, the importance of, of rest on your immune system, the importance of, uh, of, of getting enough, uh, you know, hydration from water and, and things of that nature. So Troy's with us today. He's going to spend the next few minutes just kind of talking to us. And, and Troy, thanks for joining us. Um, and thanks for joining us each and every week as, as you have been, you know, throughout this, this pandemic. Thanks for being a, 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 a strong BMI member throughout. Uh, what, Troy, what, what got you into, why did you decide to, you know, take that next step and, and start to educate? You know, you, you were, as an undergrad, you were a public health major, which there is a correlation. Um, but why, why, why was it important for you to to do research even outside of your degree um, of public health? Why was it important for you to, to learn more about, you know, you know, developing a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, health is important. It's, I think every human being should have a desire for, uh, for optimal health or, or at least a general uh, sense of health and well-being so they can live a quality uh, life. Um, you don't need to be a uh, health major of any sort, a health professional of any sort. Um, if, if you're going to live, you might as well live. <laughs> and so you, you could be a 
productive, happy uh, human being. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't never wanted to be a doctor or anything um, or a medical professional of any sort. I just figured that uh, I want to be here and I want to be um, productive. And then I figured I want to help my family and, and others who wanted to live happy and productive life, you know, a quality life, not just a long life, because uh, it's more important about the quality, in my opinion, more important about the quality of the life than the, even the quantity. But if you could have both, uh, both in quantity and quality, that is a long and productive life, then it only makes sense to do so. And I know that, um, unfortunately, we don't have access uh, or, or it is not uh, given to us throughout traditional education have to have that long, happy, healthy lifestyle. You have to do some digging. And even my uh, college experience shown that uh, they didn't tell me everything that I needed to know, um, that I had to look on my own for independent, trustworthy, credible resources, which is, uh, which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, and you need to do what you need to do in order to, to get the results that you want. Right. Um... And, and why, why um, public health, it, you know, and I, I kind of want to ask a leading question. Did it have to do with, you know, did you get into public health because of, of what you knew or did you learn later on about the, the vast disparities? You know, we see right now, not just with, you know, with COVID, the, the huge disparities between uh, communities of color, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and primarily, you know, African-American communities um, with a higher prevalence of, you know, fatalities, you know, based on, you know, when you factor in the, the, the actual population percentages of African-Americans as, you know, in, in contrast to, you know, to, to white Americans or, or European Americans. Um, but, but even outside that, you know, you see higher rates of, of diabetes, type two diabetes and, and hypertension and, and things of that nature in African-American communities. You know, we, we see the, the food deserts. Um, and I think that at this point, people would, be, would just be ridiculous not to factor in structural racism, institutional racism as, as huge factors. Why in, in, you know, indigent communities of color that we, we see um, these fast food de deserts and, and the lack of, of healthy, nutritious fruits and you know, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, but even, but even how, how, how much of a lack of education around, um, you know, um, nutrition is, nutrition is huge. Can, can you, can you talk to us about, about some of those disparities? And then I, and then I have a follow-up question because you, you've actually done some studies where, where um, and this is a fault, this is more, the, the follow-up question is more, has more to do with kind of almost an indictment of, of, Healthcare in this country in general, but but uh, what can you tell us about those those disparities and, and did they did that factor into your desire to go into public health? Yes, when I initially got into health, it was more um, just um, first individual. I want to be individually personally healthy, and then uh, like I said, uh, extend that knowledge to my family, and then um, so it wasn't until later till I learned just how. <laughs> just how deep it is the as far as the, the systems uh, targeted effects on uh, people of color and uh, poor and the poor as far as mistreating them and giving them low uh, targeting them with, with with pollution targeting them with uh, poor nutrition and, and lack of access to proper health care and targeting but making sure that uh, they don't have the same quality uh, even the same quality building codes, they don't have the same, they make sure their uh, landfills and, 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 you know, energy, toxic energy plants and, and uh, toxic sludge. And it, it is just a vast of difference when you think about how in richer neighborhoods, they'll put a Whole Foods, mar a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's and organic markets and make sure they have organic fare and, and then uh, in other poorer neighborhoods or uh, black neighborhoods, that's, that's where they target, um, you know, poor, lower quality um, foods and where some, some neighborhoods, there are food deserts, which means they don't even have uh, a supermarket in their area or they don't have access to healthy food within 
a, a reasonable distance in where people get access to food through gas stations and liquor stores. Um, and then you have, you know, neighborhoods where they have more liquor stores than fruit stands, uh, than food, than fruit aisles. So it's definitely, you, you, once I learned more, I said, this is, and this is an attack on our physical health. It's also an attack on our mental health uh, because your food affects your mental as well. Um, you know, access to gyms, there, there's more gyms and, and, and prosperous neighborhoods than, uh, than non, non-prosperous neighborhoods. And that affects your, so, you know, health is composed of your physical, your mental, your social, your emotional, your environmental, and, and they are attacking uh, the government that is, is, uh, is attacking um, people on multiple levels in multiple different ways. So you, you, you find out that Flint, Michigan got a lot of attention for lead in their water and, and how just sinister that was for the government to allow that to happen. Um, and they would never allow that to happen in a, in a white neighborhood, a richer white neighborhood that happened to a, uh, a poorer black, predominantly black neighborhood. And then once you, you study more, you realize that the media does not going to tell you that Flint, Michigan is definitely not the only one. They're definitely a uh, toxic, um, polluted water in, in many cities around the country and uh, the high correlation between between uh, those communities that are being poisoned um, due to their economic status and their, and their race. So it is wild. You, you start learning about the CDC and the FDA and you start reading books like the medical uh, apartheid and you say, wow, this, this is deep. This is a multifaceted comprehensive attack on wealth and that, I mean, on health and then you just have to do anything you can to uh, just try to fight it. Yeah, and, and um, you know, you alluded to to some of that. As we know, with any profession, um, just like there there are, you know, you know, good teachers, there are bad teachers, there are you know, good business owners, there are bad business owners, and and in that same vein, um, the medical profession doesn't get a pass. We know that that there are, there are really good comprehensive doctors, and and we know that that some, some doctors there. Some doctors are unfortunately heavily influenced by um, the pharmaceutical industry, and, and we know that there there are some life saving drugs that are, that have been created that have really helped help people a lot, you know. But we also understand that that you know every time you turn on the television, I mean, there's there's like a new ailment because the 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 uh, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry is a, is a multi trillion dollar um, a year industry. It's well over a trillion dollars, um, you know, a year industry. So maybe not multi, but it's a, it's a trillion dollar a year industry. And, you know, you turn on TV and you have these commercials like, oh my gosh, there's restless leg syndrome. There's this, there's that. And then even some of the other ones that the, the side effects just seem horrifying, <laughs> you know? So, but uh, again, there are some, some pharma school drugs that have, have been um, tr tremendous lifesavers and help have helped people, you know, tremendously, tremendously. Um, but we, but we look at things like, for instance, type two diabetes, which is something that with proper diet and exercise, it can be reversed. You know, um, it, you know, some people are able to reverse it with proper diet and exercise with virtually no, um, you know, no prescription drugs whatsoever. We, you know, we've seen a lot of, a lot of cases that like that. And, and, um, you know, and that's something that's a decision that people have to make on their own. You know, we can't tell somebody, you know, what to take, and what not to take, but we can ask people, you know, that you need to do your due diligence and, and have, you know, honest conversations and, and, and go out and try to find a, a doctor that is very comprehensive, that, that is not going to just force, it's just not going to just, you know, you know, a doctor that's not going to do their due diligence and just going to, just going to prescribe you something without having a, a long in-depth conversation with you about alternatives and, 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 um, what the pros and the cons are about, um, whatever they're prescribing or, or what they're not prescribing. I mean, the, these, this is, this is where, as you know, this is where people can really take control of their, of their health. And I think a lot of people, when they go to the doctors, they don't go in there critically thinking that I'm going to ask, I have a whole bunch of questions to ask. And these are the questions I should be asking. 
And, um, and that's something that is, is learned. I mean, you learn how to take control of your, of your health and to be, to be your, your best, best advocate for your health, you know, even when you're going to see a, a trained expert. But when we talk about this, Troy, you mentioned this before, what, what have you learned about, about um, when it comes to nutrition? It, it seems that a lot of doctors in the U United States um, are not really, you know, are not really uh, versed with proper nutrition. And, and I remember you saying something that you, you had read um, extensively that um, when going to med, med school, most doctors are not required to take, but what, how many, like three, I think you said some about three credit hours of nutrition. Can you expound upon that? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that um, because I should be clear that the pharmaceutical industry is, is arguably the most corrupting force in America when you think about how they, um, they fund politicians in order to push their philosophies of drugs and surgery. You know, they have the drug and cut philosophy. Their, their model is not uh, nutrition. Their model is not um, exercise. Their, their go-to is, is drugs, drugs, drugs. That's where they can make the most money. That's where they can... Uh, makes they can patent their uh, inventions and their creations and 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 make millions and billions of dollars um which is something they can't because they, they can't patent natural cures cures um yeah nutrition uh, there's many many doctors and you know health experts medical uh people who who will say that um nearly every disease is, is reversible by nutrition and with with proper um you know, eating of fruits and vegetables, your G-bombs, your greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. You're, by taking certain herbs, certain vitamins that you can live a very healthy life and, and you know, prevent or treat any disease. But if you ask uh, doctors, they will not tell you that because they don't learn that, they don't know that themselves. And they don't know that themselves because when they go to medical school, they are taught nothing almost nothing but drugs and, um, and and surgery. And that is because once again, of the corrupting force of the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industries, which actually fund a lot of medical schools and medical curriculums. So it is, you know, diabolical when you think about just how deep the conspiracy goes and um, just for the sake of greed and, and, and power, because there's they don't have power. They know that you can heal yourself. You can you can uh, you can take control of their health and squander squander their 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 millions and billions and like you said trillions. Um, if you just get get uh get your health from the ground, uh, if you grow your own food, if you take if you eat your own seeds, uh, eat your own plants, that uh, takes their control and their money away, mm -hmm. and. Um, it, it is disgusting just how little a doctors know about vitamins. You ask, you go to your doctor and ask them about herbs and vitamins, and, and they look at you all weird, like you're the crazy one. Um, but in other countries, they'll tell you they they how to how to heal yourself. But uh, here, it's it's almost illegal, and, and doctors have gotten in trouble for actually <laughs> uh, suggesting vitamins and foods and herbs. Uh, to treat you, you know, if you tell uh, people that they can cure themselves, if you, especially if you use the word cure, the FDA will come after you in yeah. certain instances. And many doctors have had their licenses taken away uh, right. just for uh, suggesting and recommending and promoting natural cures. So it's it's real, it's real wild. Right, right. I I, I remember uh, years ago where I was doing some. Um, some lectures on 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 Black history out in in Norway, and I and I when I went out to Norway, and uh, you know I met a lot of people, and then you know um, I met someone who's who both both their parents were, were doctors, and actually one of their doc one of the parents was um, a naturopathic doctor, and then one was a more traditionally trained doctor, and and they were telling me that, for instance, in that country. Um, you know, traditionally 
trained doctors, you know, you know, doctors in, in you know, so-called like Western medicine, you know, they, you know, um, they work in concert. Like if, if something doesn't work or they feel that their patient would be a, a good candidate for um, something more um, nature-based, you know, um, and, you know, that, that they'll refer them to a naturopathic doctor they'll refer them to a naturopathic doctor or they'll work in concert. They, it's not like this, this tug of war <laughs> that you see here in the United States where, you know, you know, Western trained doctors will, will often frown upon, you know, often frown upon, um, you know, you know, the practice of, of naturopathic doctors and, 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 you know, holistic doctors and things of that nature. They'll, they'll, you know, frown upon it or they'll, they'll denigrate the practice itself, you know, where in Norway, you know, what I saw is that they, they worked in concert with one another. They didn't, they didn't see it as a competition. They saw it as a, as a collaborative effort in the best interest of their, um, their, their patients. But, but here's the thing, Troy, and, that, and, and this is what I, the next, this, you know, the segue to the next question I want to ask you in Norway, much like most industrialized countries, except for the United States, um, they have a social contract for free healthcare for all their citizens, right? So it really behooves the healthcare industry and the, and the government in general in, in places like Norway for them to um, make, you know, make sure that they have as healthy a populace as possible because it's going to save much, 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 much more money on the back end if you don't have a population that's full of invalids, right? So for for um, preventative, there's something to be said about preventative care. If you if you teach a, a population to be healthy on the front end, right? You're they're gonna you know many of them are gonna be healthy on the back end. And we, now we understand that unfortunately some people get diseases that are. Um, genetically caused and they're, you know, predisposed because of, of certain genes that they might have in their family. But as you said, a lot of these diseases, these ailments are, are preventable, right? They're preventable with, with proper diet and, and nutrition and, 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 and exercise. And so that country has universal health care. So they, they have something to be gained from having doctors that work in concert with one, with one another across the different fields, a, a Western trained doctor working with a naturopathic doctor and so forth. Um, we're here in the United States, right? We don't have healthcare, they're, they're in universal healthcare. They don't have, so they have all the bells and the whistles and say, oh, we have the best equipment in the world and, and, and hospitals that have um, all the, tech, the best technology in the world. And that may be the case, but not everyone has access to that. Not everyone has access to that because we don't have universal health care. The, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act does not cover everybody. It does not cover everybody in any shape, form, or fashion. You know, when it was implemented, there were what 23 to 24 million people that were left off of that still did not have health care. And we know that based on the Harvard study from several, several years ago, but roughly around 40 to 40. 40, 000, 40 to 44,000 people a year in the United States die simply because they don't have health insurance. They, have act, they, have, don't, they don't have any access to health insurance. And so with this country that has such a large GDP, but who is the GDP serving? It's serving by and large, who benefits from that GDP? Large corporations, the, you know, the government, elites, but how does it trickle down to the people? How does it trickle down? It doesn't trickle down because they don't, they, there, there is no, universal health care here and, and and why is there no, you know, no universal health care well you know that troy because the pharmaceutical industry the health insurance corporations they they pay a lot of money to politicians um and and the different lobbying outfits to in, to to work against any kind of bill that might provide health you know universal health care for all because they know a Medicare for all system would be um, a huge competitor with them and would, would perhaps put a large dent, a large dent. So they would, ex it, they would exist, right? But, but a lot of folks would opt to go with the state run Medicare for all 
if there was a state run Medicare for all in this country. And, and that's what they're scared about. And so I, I wanted to ask you, Troy, you know, what are your thoughts on the fact that, that you have a country like this? So like, for instance, if you look at Cuba, which I, I've done a lot, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, a lot, a lot of studies around uh, Cuba in general. And, and, and when you look at Cuba, um, in Cuba, you know, doctors, they, they'll tell you, they, they, they go, you know, the, their first three rules that they, they try to adhere to are, is prevention, prevention, and prevention. And every community, barrio, every community, whether it's a city or it's a rural village in Cuba, um, has access to community doctors that will go and, and they will administer comprehensive examinations of everybody, you know, year in and year out, uh, free of charge. If somebody is really, really um, poor, you know, economically poor, and they need a life-saving, you know, um, surgery, they, they, they will get that in Cuba. Cuba, um, but also Cuba believes in, in prevention, you know, in prevention. And, and it's one of those countries like a Norway that, that really, you know, provides, you know, preventative care. And, and, you know, Cuba, by a lot of different independent uh, organizations, Cuba has a much more comprehensive healthcare system than does the United States. The United States might have a lot more equipment, might, you know, and that's for a number of reasons. That's because of the blockade that, that the United States put on Cuba, the vicious blockade. Um, they put on that, you know, in my estimation, the illegal blockade that they put on Cuba, you know, decades ago that has cost that country billions and billions of dollars and, and, and made really things really, really difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, but it also, you know, the U.S. has a lot more expensive, you know, equipment, but Cuba has a much more, a much better and much more comprehensive uh, system. Uh, that's why Afro-Cubans, Cuban, Black Cubans, if you will, uh, live seven, eight years longer on average than African Americans. Now think about that. You know, so they live several years longer on, on average than than do the the Afri the, a the average African American. And um, you know, and a lot of that has to do is is with the the health, the access to healthcare that that Cuba has and other countries have. And so I wanted to ask you ask you. What, what are your thoughts on, on the fact that, that you reside in a country that despite it, it wooing itself and, and kind of parading itself around as, as a country that has such a massive GDP and this, that, and the other, still is the last industrialized country on the planet Earth that, that, um, that still does not have a uh, social contract for universal health care for its citizens? What, 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 what say you? Troy Moten on this issue. It's disgusting. It is clear that this country doesn't have uh, the same moral fiber as other countries. There's an absence of ethics and principles and just a care for other humans, other other countries. They have uh, you know laws and policies that show that they want to promote the health and happiness of a uh, of their populations, of their constituents, and you know, there's you know, when you look at uh, they have ranks of countries that uh, that show how happy they are, and you know, they those countries usually with universal health care at the top of that list because their countries actually uh, do what they can to make sure they can live a uh, a, a healthier life. Um, and the United States is usually far down on that list because when you have uh, a, a sick, fat nation, that usually affects your your happiness. But um, yeah, there's just so many different ways that the United States um, mistreats its its uh, its citizens um, through the through making it hard to get a doctor, through making it hard to get your proper surgeries, through making it hard to get your food, through making it more expensive to get your food. They have policies through the USDA, uh, you know, the Department of Agriculture, where they uh subsidize unhealthy and they uh and in relation making healthier foods more expensive you know they're subsidized things filled with sugar and and soy and 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 other things because of their uh you know corrupt affiliation with those industries 
um, and they'll leave the, uh, the healthier fruits and vegetables, the organic stuff, um, you know, alone. So that they end up being uh, less affordable and less, less accessible. Um, and this is all done on purpose once again, because of the, 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 the uneasy uh, affiliation between these industries, the pharmaceutical industry, which we talked about before, but the certain food industries, um, even, you know, tobacco industries, uh, lots of, you know, billions of dollars are, 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 you know, filtrated to the pockets of politicians just because they make laws uh, to support these unhealthier industries and ignore all of the, uh, the healthier side effects. I mean, all the, the healthier um, impacts of people. So, you know, those countries uh, that have universal health care and they, they just have a different sense of what it takes to be a, <laughs> a, a ethical human being in, in the United States once, once doesn't have that, uh, that same intuition. They have a totally different model, it's totally different paradigm. It's money, money first, power, power. Money and power is right up for their, their priorities, the health of uh, their citizens really doesn't make the, uh, the cut. Um, actually, look, when you look at the, uh, the top 10 causes of death, uh, doctor caused death is number three. They call it iatrogenic death, which is death caused by doctors and hospitals. And it's wild that uh, <laughs> the third leading cause of death is because of, of the medical system and doctors because doctors are always pushing medications and even when medications are used properly uh, um, people are still dying by the hundreds of thousands uh, or when doctors are having unnecessary surgeries causing death doctors are are, are prescribing medicines uh in error um doctors are, you know the go-to for doctors are antibiotics and so it's, it's been causing antibiotic resistance which is going to be a major issue in the upcoming years as uh, more and more powerful super bugs come into existence and we won't have the proper uh, medication to get rid of it. And some of that stuff fortunately can be uh, uh, alleviated by diet and exercise, but some, some of it can't. And if you just use proper drugs properly, then uh, you would be able to get rid of some of this stuff. But um, yeah, it's just wi widespread corruption, widespread greed. It is, it is, uh, it is something which you learn about it, and, and you, you learn they attack you through your food, through your water, through your air. Um, you, you name it, and, and the doctors, your personal, you just have to find a way, find find a way to educate yourself, and find a way to find these homeopathic and naturopathic doctors who understand. Uh, who first had that moral fiber, and then they understand the, the power of uh, nu nutrients and exercise, and then uh, you can you can fight the uh, nefarious system as, as much as possible. Right, that's a good point. And and uh, you know, as we draw towards the end, I wanted to you know you 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 know you brought up something that was you know very spot on, and and I think it alludes to the fact, and, and perhaps you'll agree, is that. You know, like anything, you know, if, especially like when you look at, you know, we're in a lecture cycle, it's, it's vastly important. You and I always talk about it. it's really important for people not to just say, oh, I'm voting this way. I'm going to vote for this party because my parents, my grandparents voted for this party because everybody else tells me it's about, you know, uh, if we're, you know, just like you would, you know, it's important for you to go into it, go to your doctor's appointment and, and ask. You know, I mean, you're you are the client. I mean, you're the client. You 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 can you should ask as many comprehensive questions as you can to your doctor. Um, and if your doctor is not willing to answer those questions, you will find a doctor that's willing to take the time and allow you to answer those questions, so that you are an an an, an active advocate for your own health. I mean, and you know, we say it about politics. You know, you and I talk about this all the time. Is that you know, go vote for anybody or vote for any referendum or, or candidate, you know, without, you know, um, weighing all the pros and the cons, what, what things that you value. Um, and, you know, if you're somebody who is a peace person and, 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 and don't want war, I mean, you know, should you vote for a candidate that is 
a warmonger who is, you know, has imperialist practices. No, I mean, no, you shouldn't. If, 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 if you believe human life should be respected and, and, you know, innocent people shouldn't die, then no, of course you shouldn't vote for a candidate that has ever supported, you know, um, wars of aggression or, or, or anything of that nature. And, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it is like when you say it, it is, it is reprehensible that this country can spend trillions of dollars on military and, and military excursions going into other far off countries and, and invading other countries and, and starting, you know, these illegal wars um, that ultimately um, the majority of people that are, that are killed in these wars are innocent civilians, not, not combatants, but civilians. And, but you don't, you can't put that kind of money into, um, you know, saving lives in your own country by way of, of comprehensive healthcare, but comprehensive universal healthcare. Uh, we know by all those different studies also that like, for instance, the California Nurses Association several years ago found out that, that it would pump millions and millions of jobs into the market if there was universal healthcare here. It would pump millions of jobs because every municipality, every town would need administrators um, to help um, you know, facilitate, facilitate this. So that it would, it would pump jobs. And then also what the California Nurses Association um, um, study found that it would save the United States literally hundreds of billions of dollars a year. I think it was the tune of like $400 billion a year. And people can look it up. Uh, um, um, benefits of universal healthcare uh, study, California Nurses Association, that it would save this money. I mean, this country, for about roughly $400 billion a year with a B because um, most of healthcare costs are, are what? Are, are administrative, they're administrative. Most of healthcare costs are administrative, administrative, you know, and, and you, you would cut down that, cut down on that um, very quickly. You know, one's social security card and their social security number would be, in essence, become their, their, their um, same number that they could utilize for their um, for their healthcare and and it just I mean just goes on and on and you know and on and, and um, you know there's as you said that there, there are these forces that that really um, it behooves them to to make sure that there is no universal health care it, it behooves them and and uh, um, so they work and spend a lot of money to make sure that doesn't happen and then you have these politicians that that talk about call health care Universal healthcare and entitlement. No, it's not an entitlement. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, human right. And and Troy, what is even more repugnant about that is these politicians that that advocate not that advocate against a universal healthcare system. They're the same ones that have the best healthcare money can buy. The best healthcare might I say that taxpayer dollars can buy, because those congressmen and congresswomen, those senators, um, they have taxpayer paid health health insurance that is among the best health insurance money can buy and so how dare you tell your constituents and 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 bamboozle them into believing that um universal health care is against their interests you know that you know and and so you so forth you have people voting against their interests because um you know, um, people have been trained to be non-critical thinkers. They've been trained to be non-critical thinkers. And, and so it, it's really something that I hope people pay um, a lot more a, a attention to. Troy, you mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned something about, uh, um, you know, lives lost, you know, you know, uh, you know through, through, you know, bad healthcare. And I, I wanna mention this, that the number one reason, the number one reason in the United States of America that people go bankrupt is what is medical cost. People, the number one reason people go bankrupt in this country, in the United States of America, is because of not being able to pay their healthcare costs. I mean, their their healthcare bills, their medical bills, because they don't have universal healthcare. Number one reason. Number one reason people are going bankrupt. That is, that is um, deplorable. By by any you know any you know righteous human standard, 
And, and so my, my, one of my, my last questions that we go to draw to end, Troy, I wanted to ask you, um, wanted to ask you, what, what are things that people, what, what, are, what are affordable, um, very practical things that people can do to help boost their overall immune system? We know sleep and, you know, so you can talk about sleep and, and the importance of being hydrated, but what, what are some things that people can, can do in, and, and what, are, what are things that maybe that you do? I mean, everyone has to, um, you know, look at what works for them. You know, everyone's body is different, but, um, you know, what are some common things, you know, that every human being needs, I guess, sleep and, 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 and water and things of that nature. But then what, what do you, what, what supplements do, do you personally, you personally take um, that, that help out with you, you know? Um, you know. Yeah, I got it. I got a help document that I have, uh, and uh, I, at the top of it, I got the 10 steps to healthy living, and it goes like this. Uh, drinks lots of water, at least eight cups a day. Eat nutritiously. That's mostly whole, unprocessed, plant-based foods. That's exercise hard at least 20 minutes, two to three times a week, including strength training. Get adequate amounts of vitamin C, at least 5,000 milligrams a day. Get adequate amount of vitamin D at least six to, six to 8,000 international units a day, consume omega-3 fatty acids, consume probiotics, stress less, sleep adequately, that's seven to eight hours a day, and fast intermittently, uh, which is uh, you know having a period throughout the day of not eating uh, because there are many health benefits of fasting and there is uh, uh, something called intermittent fasting where people choose not to eat uh, for a, um, for 16, 12, 14, 16, 20 hours, uh, cause there's many health benefits that come with, uh, not eating and having a period that allows your body to, to, to uh, repair itself. Um, so what's free drinking lots of water. That's free exercising, do push ups, jumping jacks, running around the block. That's free. Uh, uh, stressing less. You have the choice to, uh, to, to, to meditate, you have the choice to do yoga, you have the choice to not allow things to bother you as much, uh, that's free. S sleep is free and, and fasting is, um, well, it's, it's kind of free when you spend less money on food anyway. But uh, the other stuff that's not free, choosing how to eat healthier, even if it's more expensive, um, in the long run, it's not more expensive because you spend less money on hospital bills and, and being sick. Um, but actually when you buy seeds in bulk, when you buy vegetables in, in bulk, you, you may find out that it's not as expensive as you, as you, and when it comes to the supplements, when you look at the power of vitamin C and the power of vitamin D, you may find that those are the most powerful vitamins and the most powerful supplements you can take uh, to prevent all types of uh, illnesses and diseases and conditions and just create a stronger, healthier body. For instance, vitamin antitoxin it's an antibacterial uh that, that you know an antibiotic it's an antiviral it, it's an, um, so it just means it helps you get rid of viruses bacteria toxins um and helps build build your cells so they uh, regenerate and help you live in a healthier way vitamin d which you primarily uh get from the sun uh adequate sunshine um but just, oh, uh, because of where we live uh, most of us live not near the equator, we don't get the sun's rays as uh, powerful as if we live near the equator. So most of us do need supplementation, but vitamin D also helps uh, avoid, um, build your immune system so that you can better uh, handle any viruses or um, germs that come your way. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids is another supplement that I take. Uh, Omega-3 helps with brain health, heart health, uh, you know, with your cardiovascular system and just making sure your your blood pressure and, and your blood is moving normally throughout your veins so that you um, can obviously move uh, in a healthier way. Probiotics is uh, something that is a good bacteria. Uh, there's good bacteria in your gut. Um, in addition to bad bacteria, there's something called good bacteria. So obviously you want to have good bacteria that helps your uh, gut and your digestive system work at optimum um, efficiency. 
and probiotics help that. Um, I also take a multivitamin because there's all sorts of minerals and vitamins that we need. Uh, and instead of buying, you know, 20 different supplements of potassium and, and calcium and, and boron and copper, uh, a multivitamin is a probably the best way to uh, get all the nutrients that you need. And because unfortunately, most of us don't eat a, you know, wholesome, comprehensive diet. Um, and, and just another result of the corrupt, just like you said, reprehensible system. Uh, the way food is grown these days, it's not even fruits and vegetables are not as healthy as they once were um, because of the uh, mistreatment of the soil and just over farming and pesticides and, and things being uh, sprayed on our vegetables. So we often do need supplementation, even if we do eat right. So probiotics uh, help with that. Um, and, and, you know, you just do all you can. You, you, you build up your uh, immune system through all these uh, supplements and all these vitamins and, and herbs as well. There's, if you can learn the power of herbs, uh, that is a, a, arguably another way to, uh, to, to and some people say instead of vitamins, they do herbs. I would say you can do, mix the two. I, I also take sea moss. Sea moss is a, a very powerful um, plant that has, out of the 102 minerals that your body needs, sea moss has 92. 92 out of the 102 minerals your body needs and has all sorts of uh, benefits just from, you, you, you pretty much you name the, the body system, the body organ system, and, and sea moss is, is something that'll uh, help it work better. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to to um, to decrease the toxicity in your body and and and, um, and and food and supplementation is the way to decrease toxicity and then they increase uh, the nutrients so that you don't have the deficiency because that's where the disease comes from, your body being too toxic or being deficient in what it needs to survive. So um, health is definitely health can be complex, but and it can also be simple, you know, eat right, exercise right, sleep, drink a lot of water, um, and don't don't eat too often, don't eat too much, and uh, we can we can we'll be all right. Right on, right on. Thank you, Troy. Um, last question: to, You know, if if someone wants to, um, you know, kind of build with you and you know and and you know engage in a dialogue about health or or even entrepreneurship. You know, how, what's the best way for folks to get in contact with you? Yeah, you can reach out to me on my email, tmoten09 at gmail.com. That's T-M-O-T-E-N-09 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook uh, or Instagram at, at Troy Moten. That's T-R-O-Y-M-O-T-E-N. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Troy. Thanks a lot for your... Uh service and, and dedication to uh, BMI program as well. Appreciate it.